Do you suffer with anxiety? Do you know what anxiety is? Do you understand the long-term effects anxiety can have? Do you want to learn some techniques in order to cope with anxiety? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show where we go that little bit deeper in a specific subject. Today's subject is, as you probably guessed, anxiety. Welcome to today's show. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Tuesday show, where we go a little bit deeper into a specific subject, from mental health, physical wellness, and spiritual stability, to the deeper topics such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. And now, please welcome your host, Mind, Body, and Soul's very own, John Morris. Hey folks and welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show where we go a little bit deeper in elements pertaining to your mind, your body and your soul. I am your host as always, John Morris, and today we are going to be looking at anxiety, what it is, what can cause anxiety, but ultimately what you can do to really, really combat anxiety and give yourself the best chance of living the life that you love. Now, as I've mentioned in other shows, it is really important when going into battle with anxiety or worry or stress or whatever it might be that you know as much as you possibly can about your enemy. It was the methodology that old and dear warriors in the medieval times would adopt. They would get to know their enemies very, very well to try and find out any area of weakness. So let's look at anxiety. What is anxiety? Well, according to the National Health Service here in the UK, they would say that anxiety is basically a feeling of unease, a feeling of a lack of control, a feeling of uncertainty, and it's all of those things. My personal definition as someone who's struggled with anxiety now for probably the last decade is this. Anxiety comes from fear, fear of the unknown. Anxiety almost always comes from two specific places. First of all, it is fear of the past, what has been. Maybe what you've said, what you've done, what about if someone finds something out that they shouldn't do that you've done? We call them skeletons in the closet. The other area that it comes from is fear of the future, particularly here in 2020. So many people are really, really uncertain as to what the future holds. They don't know how their jobs are going to be affected. They don't know how their family is going to be affected. They don't know about the spread of this virus and so many other things. So there's a lot of uncertainty. So those are the two main places that I have found that anxiety comes from. And anxiety is such a big topic, I actually wrote about it in chapter one of my book, The Battles We All Face, which is available at thebattlesweallface.com. I'm sure many of you guys and girls have checked it out. But this is a big, big topic. So I've got to talk to you now, because one of the questions that I always get asked is, John, what does anxiety feel like? Well, at its core, anxiety feels like shortness of breath. It feels like your muscles are tightening. It feels like your blood is flowing a lot faster. It feels like your brain is spinning in a million different directions all at once. It feels like overwhelm. It feels like fear. It feels like uncertainty. It feels almost like every single negative emotion that you can possibly imagine all dumped on you at once. And that's when it's at its worst. When it's at its most severe, the effects of anxiety are not wanting to participate in certain tasks like meeting up with family, meeting up with friends, going outside. Other effects are, you know, just feeling really, really tired, feeling a sense of overwhelm about my work, about situations that are going on, feeling a sense of overwhelm about family and so many other things. One of the things that I look at now, as I mentioned earlier on, fear causes anxiety and it's usually about things from the future or things from the past, okay? What two of the things that I try to really, really adopt into my own life now are, first of all, try and take a deep breath. And I know this is, it sounds very, very easy and very, very simple to do. It is a practice and it's a discipline that I really try to focus on in my own life of being here in the present. I can't control what has happened in the past. Whatever has happened has happened and whatever things that are going to happen in the future are going to happen. I can control none of them, just the same as you can control none of them. Once we make peace with this simple fact, things actually become a lot easier. Okay, now you may say, well, I've done something really, really terrible in the past. We reap what we sow, more than what we sow, later than what we sow. Meaning, that is why, as I've explained in other teaching, it is so important to really be aware of what we're doing, of what we're saying, and how we're behaving. 
because that will have a knock-on effect going on into our future. Does that make sense? When I try to be here in the present, I'm aware that maybe a website needs building or a painting needs creating for a client or maybe I need to do a speech or maybe I'm going to be meeting uh, a, big, uh, a big celebrity guest I'm going to be interviewing them. I'm very much aware of that. But I also know that if I allow my brain to spin out of control, that if I'm interviewing the guest or if I'm doing a painting or if I'm doing all these other things, they're not going to be the best that they could be. Why? Because I'm spending my entire life in anxiety. I try to remain here in the present as much as I possibly, possibly can. And that is, you know, I'm focusing on where I am right now. I'm here. I'm standing in front of the camera. I'm standing in front of you. The, the, it's raining outside, you know, there's nice and clean all around me and there's paintings around me and things, okay? So that is what I'm focusing on right now. The other thing that you have to kind of figure out in your own mind and build into your life as a discipline is asking the question every single time you feel an anxiety attack coming on. Is this a rational fear or is it an irrational fear? Now, what's the difference between that? A rational fear is something that could happen. Like, for example, uh, there could be spiders in the house, okay? There could be a rat outside. Now, we don't have rats here that I know of. I certainly haven't seen any, but I'm using it as an example. There could be a lot of people outside when I go into the cities. There could be some questions that people ask me that I'm uncomfortable with when we're doing public speaking events. There could be, you know, people disliking my artwork. There could be people not liking the teaching. There could be people complaining about how I dress, and so on and so on and so on. These are logical, you know, potentially rational things that are going on and it's how I deal with that the other thing as well you know is, is you know the office could be really really busy now not for us because we work from home but when you are going out into the workplace you may work in a really really busy office so these are rational things irrational things are for example you step out of bed and the whole earth just opens up you step outside and you get beamed up by aliens or there's gonna be, you know, a mass riot in the middle of a quiet little village. We may laugh about these things, but these are very, very real and actual things that people struggle with all the time. Like fears of, you know, of, of open spaces, fears of closed spaces. Even though there is nothing actually happening at the time, we build it up bigger and bigger in our mind than it actually is. And that's kind of my, my fourth point there's five points in this, by the way. My fourth point is this, that when we build things up in our mind, that is where the real battle is going on. Externally, which is your outside world, counts for about 20% of how your battle with anxiety is going to go, maybe even less than that. 80% of your battle is faced internally, in the mind, and that's why we talk about the battlefield of the mind. Because you and I, because you're not alone in this, have the ability to be able to magnify and make much bigger a situation than ever, ever was intended to be. And, you know, we can think about the worst case scenarios. So for me, for example, when I'm meeting up with extended family, I'm thinking, what about if somebody says something to me that I don't like? What about if someone, you know, says something to me based on, on how I look? What about if someone says this? What about if someone does this? What about, and it's always the what if, what if, what if, what if. And I've been to many of these different things and maybe it's only ever happened once, but because of that one instance that it happened, it's made me on edge ever since. Now for me, I know where my anxiety journey started. It started when I was a youth worker. We had, you know, very, very little leaders, and very little resources, and we had a lot of youth that were coming into our building. Now that is a lot, and all the pressure is on you. And people would say, well, yeah, but if you can't handle it, then you need to get out. And that's, that's fine. That's wonderful. But what about if you had to be there, if you couldn't leave because, you know, you needed the finances, it was a secure job, there was a lot of uncertainty, you were building your business, you were doing a lot of other things. Okay, unless you've been in these situations yourself, you really don't have any room to get into the discussion. Yes, you can voice your opinion in things, but you don't have room to get into the discussion as to how sh someone should behave in their professional life. So those are some of the things that, you know, anxiety feels like and, uh, you know, the rational versus the irrational. 
Now, obviously, the point that you're here for is how do we actually cope? Well, if you've seen my teaching on worry, this one falls into that same category. What I want you to do is to imagine four lights. A, a green light, a yellow light, a red light, and, you know, a meltdown light. Now, whatever color that is for you, you can obviously assign a color to that. Your green light, and I want you to practice this daily, sometimes maybe even three or four times a day. I want you to be able to say, right, how am I feeling today? Green light again, if you've heard the teacher, don't worry, I'm feeling great, I'm feeling powerful, I'm feeling passionate, I'm feeling excited, all positive emotions, great. If you are feeling that yellow light, which is, I'm feeling a little bit sore today, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit frustrated, little bits of everything, okay? When it gets to red light, it's like, well, I'm feeling fairly, these are the fairly teachers, I'm feeling fairly angry, I'm feeling fairly frustrated, I'm feeling fairly wound up, I'm feeling fairly tired. When you get to the meltdown stage, which is the stage that you want to avoid almost at all costs, you're saying, I'm feeling really angry, these are the really teachings, I'm really angry, really frustrated, really sore, really angry, you know, whatever it might be, I know I used angry twice, but angry when you're frustrated and, and a meltdown stage is such a big thing, okay, that, you know, it deserves mentioning twice. So you, you need to take responsibility for yourself and say, how am I feeling today? You know, and do, do the body check, you know, have I gotten enough sleep? Am I drinking enough water? Am I, you know, exercising enough? Am I, you know, taking time to rest? Am I, whatever it might be. So, you know, th these are the things that you need to be aware of. So green light is good, feeling. Okay, so feeling good, feeling energized, feeling excited, those things. When you get into the amber stage, like I say, you know, it is the, I'm feeling a little bit frustrated. So it's the little bits. Red is the fairlies and uh, meltdown is the verries, okay? So you need to be aware of what's going on. Listen to what you're saying. Get your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it might be, to also pay attention to these things. That is one of the ways that I cope. Now, when you're having a full-blown anxiety attack, that means two things. One, you haven't built in practices. Okay, now I've got to put the ownership on you because the only thing that we can control in this world is ourselves, how we behave. And I know control is sometimes a, a, an illusion, but bear with me for the, for the purpose of this illustration. All we can do is to control our behavior. And when we've got into the point of a full-blown anxiety attack, that means we're in the meltdown stage. That means that we haven't taken the time to really think about, you know, how are we feeling? What's the triggers? What's setting us off? What's going on? You know, try and find the root in all of these things, because if you find the root, you can tend to deal with the problem a lot better. So that's the second thing, of course. So you've your traffic light system, and you've, you know, you're finding the route, and you know what to do when you're in an anxiety attack. I know people are going to ask me this. Okay, so breathing first and foremost. Take yourself out of the situation if you can. Um, find things that you enjoy that relax you. Uh, and and honestly, if you're in a situation where you can't get out. The one thing that you're going to have to do, which is really difficult to do, and I know I've been there myself, in full-blown panic mode internally, where my body is screaming to get out of the situation, I have had to, and this is point four, endure. And sometimes when you can't get out of that situation, you're physically wanting to claw, scratch, fight, bite, everything to get out of the situation. You're like, I can't cope with this, I can't cope with this, and you tell yourself all these negative things. By this point, no, nothing positive is going to work. The, the anxiety attack, like having a fit or a seizure or, or whatever it might be, or an illness or sickness bug, has to run its course. Um, and I'm sorry to say, this is based on my own experience again, folks, you know, and you will have a very, very different experience, I'm sure. But, you know, it has to run its course. And these are some things, hopefully, that's going to help you. But the, the, the really important thing that I want you to get now before anything is you have to, have to, have to, have to build in um, your practices and teachings and coping mechanisms to your own life so as you never get to that stage of anxiety attack. The final thing that I want to say today, folks, is this. You've heard the teaching before about once broken, never the same. And if you haven't, again, this is in my brand new book, The Battles We All Face. I encourage you to check it out at thebattleswealthface.com. It's available in ebook and paperback and signed paperback version as well, both on thebattleswealthface.com and 
uh, on Amazon as well. Go and check it out if you're struggling. It is a book that's going to help you with so many areas of your life. And the final thing I want to say is this, folks. Once broken, never the same means that if you've got a history of severe anxiety and severe anxiety attacks, the chances are you are going to boil over a lot faster than you would have done pre-anxiety attack. Now, if I can give you an illustration, I've used this one for the teaching on worry before, but obviously, because it's such a good one, I want to again teach you this one. Imagine a boiling pot of water. Now we use this with porridge. I tried it. It doesn't really have the same effects. Water boils a lot faster. So, so you have boiling water on the highest temperature. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Now if you turn down the heat of the water, it'll cease to boil over, but will still simmer away little bubbles. As soon as you turn the heat back on, what happens? The water rises right back to the top of the pan and begins overflowing again. It's exactly the same with anxiety. You can be calm and stress-free, but if one of those triggers occurs, such as a name, a place, a memory, or even an activity, then you can end up rising to the top of the pan and bubbling over very, very quickly. Folks, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Come and visit us at battlesweallface.com where you can check out more teaching just like this. You can check out my brand new book, which there'll be an advert on in a little minute uh, for that. But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it may be the very, very thing that they need to hear and even the very thing that saves them from, from going down paths that they'd rather not go down. And folks, as always, want to thank you so much for being our wonderful audience. Without you, there is no us. I really, really appreciate it. Check out our latest interview this coming Friday, and I think you're going to absolutely love who we've got on. It's going to be an absolute blast. As always, I have been your host, John Morris. This has been the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast, where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life through inspirational, motivational, and educational content. Until next time, take care. We're out of time. I'll see you soon.